Hello, I'm Dr. Colin Kroeniger from the Department of Nutrition at Case Western Reserve University. Today I'm going to talk about fetal cycles. This occurs in the liver, and the reason why it's so complicated is that the liver is capable of not only glycolysis in the fed state, but also gluconeogenesis. A fetal cycle is something that could happen if there wasn't proper regulation. So let's talk about the first uh, fetal cycle that we have here. Up at the top, on the left-hand side, we have, this is the glycolysis side, and this is the gluconeogenesis side. So this is your fed side, and this is your fasted side over here. So in the fed state, glucose will be converted to glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme glucokinase in the liver. Glucokinase is high, it's expressed, it's controlled at the transcriptional level by insulin, and it's inhibited by the fasting glucagon. In contrast, you have on the gluconeogenesis side, you have glucose 6-phosphate having that phosphate removed to release the free glucose into the blood. This enzyme is glucose 6-phosphatase. This enzyme is present only in the liver and the kidney cortex, and so therefore those are the two tissues that are capable of gluconeogenesis. The other thing that separates is that this glucose 6-phosphate, from keeping it from going in the fetal cycle, is that glucokinase is in the cytosol, and the glucose 6-phosphatase is in the ER. This is called compartmentation. That just means that the enzymes are in different locations in the cell, and it's another way to prevent that fetal cycle and then keeping the carbons trapped in that cycle. The next potential fetal cycle is shown here. Again, this is the fed side. This is the fasted side, gluconeogenesis. This part of the pathway um, is taking fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In the fed state, the enzyme is PFK1, or phosphofructokinase 1. This enzyme is positively regulated by fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. This comes from the enzyme PFK2, and there's another video that talks about the regulation of PFK2 and PFK1. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in gluconeogenesis is converted back to fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme fructose bisphosphatase. What's interesting is that whatever happens on the fed side, which is a positive regulator, like fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and AMP, is a negative regulator on the gluconeogenic side. So therefore, you can have the organ sharing the same uh, similar pathways along the glucose glycolytic pathway and the gluconeogenic pathway, but they're regulated to prevent these fetal cycles. The other important thing which I failed to mention is that PFK1, glucokinase, and I'll talk about the next one, all of those are irreversible enzymes. So you have to have another enzyme for gluconeogenesis to allow it to go back out and release glucose. The last fetal cycle is the conversion of phosphoenopyruvate to pyruvate. This fetal cycle in the fed state is regulated by the metabolite further upstream that was just generated. That's fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This is a positive allosteric regulator of pyruvate kinase. This is an irreversible enzyme. In gluconeogenesis in the fasted state, to go back up to glucose, you need two enzymes to get around that pyruvate kinase step. The first enzyme is pyruvate carboxylase. The second enzyme is Pepsi-K. Pyruvate carboxylase is positively regulated by acetyl-CoA, and Pepsi-K is increased at the transcriptional level in the fasted state by glucagon, through cyclic AMP, and through PKA. So the fetal cycles in summary, if I go back to the original slide, um, the fetal cycles are basically what would happen if there wasn't regulation. Glycolysis shares enzymes with gluconeogenesis, and that's specifically here. I don't have them listed, but there's several enzyme steps that are shared that are reversible in glycolysis. These fetal cycles are irreversible, and therefore whatever happens on the glycolytic side, you need another set of enzymes and different regulation to go back up to generate free glucose. And so that's how the carbons don't get trapped, and you either make energy in the glycolytic state or you re release free glucose in the gluconeogenic state.